Hey everybody, at BB Matson here, working on the 305 for the CB77 Superhawk. And today it is valve adjustment and cam chain tensioner adjustment. So let's do a video on this right now. Look how shiny those are. You just love them. All right, I'm looking at the Bill Silver book, search valves, and bada bing, bada boom. What we're looking for is to adjust both valves or all four valves to the same value, 0 0.004 inches, all right, 0 0.004 inches. Remember that, um, I've got a metric set, so we're gonna need to convert that. And thank you, Google. Quick Google search and can get that converted right away. Good thing too, because I suck at math. And digging through all of my feeler gauges, I have a 0 0.10 millimeter, so I'm missing the 0 0.02. I don't have that, so I'm just going to go kind of tight and get it really close. That's like super marginal. So I've got a one there, right there. I checked the original toolkit. I read that that may be in the toolkit, but not in mine. So I'm at 0 0.10 millimeter. All right, we're good to go. Let's get to it. All right, so here's kind of the process. Again, we're going to go 0 0.004 or 0 0.1 zero two millimeters on this. It's a pretty small feeler gauge. We're gonna use the LT mark, all right? And we are going to use the uh, T mark. So LT and T are gonna be our marks. T is for the right side. LT, of course, is for the left side valves. Each side has two valves, and they're both, uh, both adjusted to the same. All right, so we're gonna do our left side first. And right here, you can see here is my LT. The only issue is, is when you're trying to adjust these things is that you're gonna have to brace it somehow. So that's why I've got my little bungee strap wrapped around and I can loop this over onto my wrench. And it's just enough tension for you to be able to line that all up. So here you can see I'm on LT. That's not gonna move while I'm dealing with it. I just wanna make sure on the other side that I am on compression stroke. So I'm over on the left side and light is just right. I can see my piston is up, but you can always just take like a zip tie or something just to make sure. Stick that down in your spark plug hole and if you hit the piston, you know you're up on compression stroke. Because if I come over to this side, this piston should be all the way down. And yet my zip tie goes all the way in. So we're good. We can adjust the left side valves. All right, let's take this off. Nice shiny covers of mine here. And uh, this is probably going to be kind of tough to show you, but I'll try to do a zoom in. What we've got here, oh, there's my real rubber O-ring. Got to get that there. Uh, we've got a little adjuster right here, okay? Then we've got a little locking nut right here. So, again, we are dialed in here. Ooh, this is going to be tricky. I'm going to actually have to cut down my feeler gauge a little bit because it's super, super narrow. Let me show you this. So our adjusting spot is right down in there underneath. And there's a little bit of a concave to it. I'm gonna have to cut down my feeler gauge a little bit just so I can get in there and adjust that properly. I saw that noted. People said you're gonna need a really narrow feeler gauge, but uh, yeah, I see totally why at this point. And guess what's on my shopping list? <laughs> a new set of feeler gauges. I just cut this one really narrow so I can get in there. And now I can lay that down there and I can actually get a proper proper uh, seal on that. So I'm going to back this all the way out, this little locking screw here. Give myself as much adjustment as I can. And I'm just going to keep tightening this until I've got a nice, smooth, little bit of drag on that feeler gauge right there. And we'll go ahead and tighten down that. I feel good about that. There's just a little bit of drag. Again, it's a one or a point one. I need a point one zero two. So I'm going a little bit lighter. A little bit lighter. I've got just a little bit of drag. Cutting this down actually worked really, really well. So now, without turning that, I'm gonna try and tighten this locking nut. Feel really good about where I'm at. It's a 10 millimeter. Just gonna keep an eye on it. 
Make sure I don't turn it unnecessarily. And it's not moving. And I've still got just that little bit of drag in there. That should be good. Crank it up one more. Just like that. All right, let's move to the front. All right, let's go ahead and take this cover off on the front on the left. Pull that out and let's see where we're at. All right, I'm gonna back off my locker right here and insert and tighten this down. Got a little bit of drag there. Feels good. Just like that. I feel good about that. Grab my 10. Keep an eye on it. That one's moving a little bit on me. It's tedious. Take your time when you're doing this. So see that turned it. There's got to be a tool. I'm going to check and see if there's a little tool in the toolkit to actually hold that in position. And sure enough, Honda thinks of everything. There actually is a little wrench in the toolkit that fits on that. How cool is that? Go ahead and back this off just a little bit and get my feeler gauge again and get this in here. So there it's locked. So I got to back it off just a little bit. That should be right. Feels good, just a little bit of drag. Not much. There we go. Now, I can grab my funky little new discovery. Lock that on there. Now it's not gonna move at all and I can tighten my little locker. Just like that. And, and I think we got it. Right there. Bada bing, that's the left side. All right, I'm just gonna quick double check. That's beautiful. Slides right in there. Great, a little bit of drag. And I'll come back around over here and I'll double check this one. And I'm good there. Should be good. And as you can see, I'm still right on my LT mark. Good to go there. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and rotate this around to T. And again, you're gonna have to use your wrench and bungee strap tool works really good for this. Just loop that around just like that. And let's pull that into position there. And that is right on my T mark. So now we can go ahead and adjust the right side. All right, it's kind of nice to have these all be the same. <laughs> it's kind of nice. On the 350s, it's a little bit different. So we're on our mark. I'm gonna take out this little doohickey here. And I'm gonna insert, this is actually a really good angle. Um, light's really good. I'm gonna show you a close up on this. So here you can really see, or if my hand's not in the way, what we're doing, we're trying to adjust this bolt so that it impacts the top of this with the right amount of clearance so everything works well. And again, it's just a little concave piece there. It's like right here, I'm bottomed out. So here's where I've screwed it all the way in here and now I'm bottomed out. Now I get my feeler gauge, I back off just a little bit until I get that proper gap. All right, so I'm gonna take my point one, slide it in here, and nudge it down until I can't move it, and then back it off until I've got, it's kind of a feel, that's the reason why they call them a feeler gauge. Just got a feel for that drag. That feels about right. I'm gonna just slowly tighten up this and grab the handy dandy little tool in the toolkit. Lock that on there. And tighten up my locker. 
Sorry about my hands, guys. Just like that. And that is perfect. Just what I want. All right, to the last one. All right, last one. Let's take our shiny cover off. And try to figure out what the hell I did with my feeler gauge. Where the hell did I put it? Aha! It was stuck in the other valve. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Back off my locker. Just like this. And I'm going to turn this one in until it stops. Sorry, it's kind of tough to show you this. My big hand's in the way. And it should stop here pretty soon. There we go. It is stopped. Can back it out. Get my feeler gauge in. There it is stopped. And right about there is where I want it. Tighten up my locker. Got just a little bit. Just like that. Grab the tool. I wonder what size. It doesn't say what size this wrench is. I'd love to know so I could tell you. It's a tiny one. And we go ahead and tighten that up. And there we go. Let's go ahead and test these before we button it up. All right, so back on the right. Slides in there good. Just a little bit of friction on that. Good deal. And we can come back under here and do the same thing. We're good. We're good on those. Now let's make sure we do that cam chain tensioner. All right, for cam chain tensioner, rotate crankshaft to LT marks compression stroke, adjust valves on that cylinder, done. When engine is on T mark compression stroke, loosen the lock nut and lock bolt on the cam chain tensioner, press lightly on the end of the tensioner, uh, to ensure it's not stuck, it should feel a little spongy. Retighten the lock bolt on and the lock nut. So pretty straightforward, going for the T mark. So just a small adjustment needs to be made here. We're going to go to T mark. Again, T is going to be right cylinder up. So just make sure you're on your T mark. Line that up right there. It looks weird in the camera, but in real life, it is lined up, I promise you. Make sure, there's, it should be it, there shouldn't be anything, but I'm just gonna test, make sure my cylinder is in the up position, 100% is. And then what I can do is go ahead and un, uh, go and loosen this, make sure it's spongy, and uh, get that set. So this is the one bolt um, that actually stripped out on me. So um, I did have to rethread this a size bigger. So this is, a, it's usually a 10 millimeter, um, but on this, it's an 11 because I had to, had to re-thread it because it fell apart on me. No good. So we're just going to loosen this all up. I'm going to double check to make sure that I am on my LT, or my, sorry, my T mark. Just going to double check, make sure it's right on. These engines get topsy-turvy at this point. I'm going to push on this. Definitely has just a little bit of movement in it. It's a little bit spongy, so I can pull on it and tug on it, and it's loose. It's good. I'm just going to let it sit there, and now what I can do is just tighten this up. That's all there is in doing the cam chain tensioner. Just going to go ahead, cinch that down well, and then move my locker into position there and cinch that up just like that be careful torquing too much on these because again this is aluminum and you can strip it out really easy ask me how i know all right valves are done we can go ahead and reinstall our caps or our covers don't forget to put the little rubber washer rubber rings in here all right Hopefully, we got this right, and we don't have to go diving back in here. Just always make sure you've got that rubber O-ring in there. And I'll go ahead and cinch these up. Pretty straightforward. That was like a really easy, easy process. It's a little bit more involved on the 350s. So it's good to like just have kind of an easy project. Any guesses on what size these are? Any guesses? I'm gonna guess it's gonna be like a 17. Oh, way, way bigger. If you guess 23, you're right. 
It's going to loosely, again, we got the O-rings in here. You don't need to crank on these crazy tight. But we're going to go around, tighten all those up. There we go. Straightforward. Valves adjusted. Cam chain tensioner adjusted. Now we're kind of to install motor time. I'm going to probably polish up the mounting bolts for the motor. Next thing is to carry this thing upstairs because there's not much else that I can really do at this point. I'll probably do like one more final clean on it and then I'm good to go. Um, in other news, I did end up and splurge a little bit on the Charlie's Place uh, regulator rectifier. So I'm going to upgrade that on the Superhawk for sure. Um, the more I look at like the original parts, it's a little sketch. Um, and these original bikes, I don't think they had a condenser or yeah, what was it? No, a regulator in them. So I'm going to go ahead and do the upgrade here. Uh, Charlie's Place came with everything. I'll probably do a video on installing that. Um, there are instructions on their website here. Um, if you need to get at it right now, you can pause the video and grab that. But yeah, Charlie's Place. Haven't installed any of their components, believe it or not. So I'm kind of excited um, to get that going. And it's worth it. It's a little spendy. I think it was like 140 bucks, 150 bucks. But man, this is a very, very key component. And I'm so close to the finish line on this. I just don't want to run into a big problem. And Plus, upgraded electronic is good. That other one looks pretty ratty. So there you go. Progress being made. Probably one of the next few videos is going to be installing this bad boy on the Superhawk. Get excited. Get excited. All right. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to subscribe. Also, hit up that Facebook group, the Keep On Wrenching Community Group on Facebook. Just sur surpassed 500 members some great people in there. And also, if you want a free sticker, head on over to keeponwrenching.com. All right, everybody, we'll see you in the next video or live stream. It's getting real over here.